The Lyra 8, I've been really into techno music recently and I couldn't have stepped into this genre at a more convenient time. I find that the Lyra 8 just lends itself to this genre of music. Full disclosure that Soma Laboratory sent me the Lyra 8 in exchange for some content, but they are in no way controlling the information that's being said in this video. This video is, however, sponsored by DistroKit. If you are an independent artist looking to officially release your music to platforms like Spotify, Amazon, iTunes, Apple Music, all the other ones, DistroKit is the best choice. It's just over 20 bucks a year to release unlimited music to all major streaming platforms, which is insane to think about. So affordable, we're gonna be getting into reasons why I think they're the best later in this video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the gear mentioned in this video, I've left affiliate links to those in the description. If you're in the market, please do use those links because it helps me and this channel a lot. Also, if you'd like to jump to something specific about the Lara 8, there are timestamps linked in the description. Let's get into how so far I've been using the Lara 8. I've more or less been using it in three different ways. Number one, as a sound design or exploratory unit. Just exploring melodies and chords can be a really interesting and therapeutic thing. Although I will say that tuning is a little bit difficult, so it's hard to program actual melodies into the Lyra 8. It's also really fun to tune up chords and just play around with these voices and how they modulate with each other. Sometimes that'll just completely change the quality of the chord, which is really interesting just to see where it goes. I've also been using the Lyra 8 as a drum texturizer. Running your drums through the external in is very interesting and can completely change the quality of your drums. So we'll look into all of that, but also ditto what I just said, but for synth. So using the same effects as well as some voices as a synth texturizer. And I just thought of this now. I know the title says three things that I'm using the Lara 8 for. I have the model 1.4 off here to the side. And so using the Lara 8 as an effect send for individual channels on the model 1.4 is also pretty interesting. So that'll be like a little bonus round. We'll look into that as well. So let's start with some sound design. Let's see how we could get this thing to sound. So I'll start by using a few coins as opposed to using the hold knob because look, if I this gets a little bit dense, so sometimes if you just want two notes, let's say, let's say three actually. So give me a second, I'm going to try and tune these. Okay, so we're stripped down here, we've got everything tuned up. Everything is at zero, so mod, sharp for both of these voices, or I should say all three of these voices. As for the chord tones, I guess you could call this a major nine chord, so chord tone one, three, and nine. I could pitch this in its entirety. I could also sharpen these notes up just to give them a bit more bite. And you know what? I actually want to add a fourth note here. So let's... So now we have a major nine chord, but we have the seventh up here on top, right? So we can get a nice balance here. So if I pull the hold knob down, I could technically if I wanted to play melodies with this, but I just haven't really gravitated towards the Lyra 8 for melodies. I've stuck more to like textures, harmonies, and effects. Even when you start using these CV controls in the back, I just find that it doesn't, doesn't easily lend itself to melodic playing, at least so far. I'm sure there's a bunch of people out there doing it, but for me, it just hasn't clicked yet. So I'll fire up this major nine chord again, and let's get into some modulation. So, three, four, and one, two. So now these voices are gonna start modulating with each other. Right, so we're, we're completely losing the quality of the chord, whoa. So instead of voices three, four modulating with one, two, I'm gonna send these to the hyper LFO. See what that does. So now we have some motion there. Okay, so I've gone ahead and changed the chord because I thought that the last one was a bit too low. So same thing again, we have a major seven chord this time. Flick that vibrato back on. So notice that when you play with the modulation, you're changing the quality of the chord. So that's just out of tune, whereas this one, it's, it kind of turns into like a power chord. I can isolate which notes I want to sharp, so I could sharpen these up a little bit, just slightly. 
And we haven't touched the effects yet, so let's start with mod delay. I'm gonna make sure that it's not sending to the LFO yet. And that's a nice quality right off the bat. We could add some feedback to that. So without, with, maybe sharpen the notes. Yeah, oh. So cool. So if you're into sound design, this is something that you could probably do for days. Right, so we lose it if we modulate too much. Very cool. Let's send this over to the Hyper LFO now. See what that does. Pitch this down. Add some distortion to this. We're gonna get like a nice explosive low end. A little lower. So before I do this for another hour, you get the point. So this is the sound of the Lyra 8, very industrial sounding. It's really dialed into that, just like that wall of sound sort of quality, especially when you dial up the distortion along with the modulate. It's just like such a big sound. If I wanna get really dense, in my opinion, maybe too dense. So obviously these are not in tune right now, but I could, I have a, a whole other four notes to add into this harmony if I wanted to. And that would be just a whole other can of worms. Using Lyra 8 as a drum texturizer, you guys know that I love drums. I want to run my drums through every single effects unit in my collection, including the Lyra 8. So off to the left here, I have the Digitech set up and here's the groove that we're gonna be working with today. Here we go. It's pretty spicy if I do say so myself. I mean, naturally we could just run this through distortion and see what happens. Oh, right off the bat. Right, so there's a sweet spot. I find that if you tweak it too much, you get into this sort of like uh, overly saturated noise territory, which could be cool. But I like that kick to be Right there, a little rounder, maybe a bit of saturation, a bit of distortion. So without, with, let's get that sweet spot again. Right there is pretty good. Yeah. And what about modulate? Naturally, this is gonna be taking some punch away from the drums, but it could give some interesting results. So feedback and delay time, I'm gonna put that way down. Super short delay time. Here we go. Right, it almost it almost has like a chorus effect. Maybe bring up this second delay time here. And if you want to get lost in delay, you could of course do that. Right off the bat. I like these drums. These are drums that I would definitely use myself. And by the way, I actually already have ran my drums through the Lyra 8 and created a bunch of samples for you guys uh, for Patreon members. So join up if you'd like to access that. So let's go ahead and muck these drums up a little bit more. I'm gonna take a few of them away, some of these voices. I'm also gonna tune all of these Lyra 8 voices, the first four, all the way down, same with the pitch. And I'm gonna send both of them to the LFO. You hear that? These little like pop, 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 these little artifacts. And if we want, we could tune them up a little bit. Okay, and let's hear that with the drums. Reduce the frequency of those artifacts. So obviously this is very subtle, but the cool thing here is that anything that's playing through the Lyra, gets sort of like wrapped around the drums in this sort of side chain fashion. So just to give you an example, I'm gonna tune these notes up. So obviously they're like super out of tune. <laughs> oh, it's 
Kind of interesting though, but you could hear the drums basically side chaining against the, the, the Lyra 8, the notes coming from the Lyra 8. Let's tune these back down. Right, so that's just right on that brink of being a note, but more of a lower like pitter patter frequency sort of thing. So now how does the same concept react to synths? I have the Mini Freak set up to the side here, which is sequenced by the Oxy-1. Not sure if you can see it in frame. It's right here, if you can see my hand. Before looking into that though, let's talk about today's sponsor, DistroKid. If you are an independent artist or producer, DistroKid is pretty much the number one choice. First off, there's a discount linked in the description of this video, which I encourage you to use. It's just over $20 a year to release unlimited music to all major streaming platforms. And one of the things that makes it amazing for independent artists is just the sheer amount of free promotional tools that they offer. Personally, my favorite is Hyperfollow, which I like to use as a free link and bio link. It's the cleanest that I could find and you're able to claim as many pages as you'd like for free. So for example, if you have multiple artist names or possibly landing pages for singles or any other important landing pages, DistroKid's got you with Hyperfollow. They recently released an iOS app so you can access all of your DistroKid information, your statistics all through your smartphone, which just makes everything that much easier and like on the go. So join the team. There's over 1 million DistroKid users and they distribute one third of the world's music. One obviously synth textural thing that you could do is, is use the Lyra 8 as like a melodic synth, program a chord, and then maybe play a riff over top of that with some other synth like the Mini Freak. But again, if you're using the Lyra 8 as a texturizer or an effects unit going into the external in of the Lyra 8, here's a few things that you might end up with. I have like a sci-fi sequence going on with the Mini Freak. Let's hear it. And let's throw some effects on here, starting with drive or distortion, I should say. Right, so I'll just give a kiss of distortion. This is what I really want to look at, mod delay. With some hyper LFO. In fact, here I'm actually going to turn off the delay in the Mini Freak ent uh, entirely just so we can really hear this. And so now let's just hear the mod delay. Same concept with the drums. These are all tuned down very low. Let's just see what this sounds like. Interesting. So I'm not sure if you could hear that. If you're here, if you're wearing headphones, you could definitely hear it. These lower frequencies are getting in the way of this sequence. There's almost like a pulse underneath it, which is nice. And now let's get to the bonus part of this video using the Lara 8 as an effect send through the Model 1.4. This is a mixer. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to clean it. Well, I do admit it is a big unit to be using as a hardware effect send. I've been doing it and I've been liking the results. So for a fun example, I wanted to split up my drums onto this mixer. So kick, snare, hi-hat, and toms. Let's see what this sounds like. So I have control, obviously, over everything. Two, three, four. As for sending effects through the Lara 8, I have my mix knob on the distortion, full blast. So let's just see what that sounds like. I'm actually gonna lower all these. So this is just the distortion quality that we're hearing. That's the sound that it's giving us. We could increase this drive if we want to go nuts. Maybe? It's a lot. 
right? So I would bring that down. And this is with it and without. So it's definitely adding some body in the background, which is very nice. As for the bond delay, I'm actually gonna bring this drive back down so we can really hear the quality of the mod delay. Once again, I'm gonna lower all these. Probably not gonna add anything to the kick. Bring the delay time super low. Once again, let's try this. So without it, we're hearing it now, let's take it off. Very cool effect and drive as well as mod delay. Let's hear this. Ooh. Just on the snare. I'm gonna bring that mix down. And again, this is the quality that it's adding. If you wanna get super experimental with this, we can go nuts. And that's what I have for you guys today. The Lyra 8 is a really cool sound design tool and these are the ways that I've been using it. It's been super fun so far. It's sort of settling its way into the workflow of the other instruments that I own. You guys know the deal. Join the Patreon for exclusive content, affiliate links for all of the instruments mentioned in this video description. Please use those links and hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for being here.